There are three types of passage in the Yoga Visishta. The main type of passage is the one that I'm primarily interested in, and which is why I'm doing this exercise of reading through the Yoga Visishta. And these are passages which direct the attention towards itself. They're passages which direct us to self-inquiry. And we often find this in the individual stories of self-inquiry of individuals who are not satisfied with the stories that are presented to them and look deeply into them, look deeply into the notions by which they lead their lives. These are, are very potent passages. We just recently had one in the story of Queen Chudala. There are other passages which set the scene for these stories of self-inquiry. These are the external circumstances. For example, we've had Queen Trudala and her husband, Sikhadvaja. We heard about them. And then we heard about the Queen's self-realization. So there are these passages, like the passage of Queen Trudala's realization, which direct us towards ourself, the nature of self. There's the context for these passages, which are the stories. And that, that's the main bulk of the Yoga Vasishta. But there's a third type of passage which isn't either of these. They could be described as yogic science, if you like, or um, to do with health matters, medicine and health matters. And the science is basically takes the form of yogic practices. So you could argue whether they're actually science in the modern understanding of the word at all. There are beliefs. There are beliefs about how the body works, about how the so-called life force or life energy works. This is prana. And the techniques given here are to do with kundalini yoga and pranayama. And as from the point of view of self-realization, they're of no interest whatsoever. Although from other points of view, they might be quite interesting. They're presented here in the context of gaining supernormal powers. Queen Trudela, although she's self-realized, her main concern was to bring her husband towards self-realization. But I think the very fact that she was a woman closed him off to that possibility. So she's basically passing her time and this is what she's decided to do, this notion or this inclination has arisen. So we've got some explanation of this. I was going to read out this particular chapter but I, I really don't see any merit in it whatsoever. It's possibly of some interest but if you're interested in Kundalini Yoga then you could probably find more complete descriptions than this passage. I'll briefly summarize it though. This is chapter 81. The first paragraph is about Kundalini. One of the other techniques of the Yoga Vasishta is to take a belief or a notion and then try and use it in the service of self inquiry. But it sometimes does this with pranayama. And we can understand the prana as the attention, not as some mysterious, subtle energy, some mystical force, but simply as the attention, which actually is subtle and mysterious. So we've got a paragraph about Kundalini, and then we've got a question from Rama about illness, physical and psychic disorders. And the belief that physical ailments are caused by ignorance is espoused here. That somehow self-knowledge dispels physical ailments. And this is a belief which personally I'm not happy about. It propagates or very easily leads to the idea that there's something immoral about being ill. Your illness is your own fault. 
Now this may or may not be true, but there's no virtue in this belief. It's not a belief which is conducive to compassion. It's a belief which is conducive to a rather hateful self-righteousness. If you're a well person and you see people that are not well as, as weak. So I don't see any benefit in this passage. Carrying on with chapter 81, we've got more about psychic disturbances and physical ailments. And we've got a passage here at the end of the page about how to see the gods. Let's have a look at this, because this is fairly typical. By the practice of purika, or inhalation, if the kundalini at the base of the spine is filled and made to rest in a state of equilibrium, the body remains firm. When through the retention of the breath all the nadis are warmed up, the kundalini rises up like a stick and its energies flood all the nadis of the body. On account of this, the nadis are purified and made light. Then the yogi is able to travel in space. When the kundalini arises through the Brahman nadi and reaches the spot known as Dvadashanta, which is twelve finger breaths from the crown of the head, during the rechaka or exhalation, if the kundalini can be held there for an hour, the yogi sees the gods and perfected beings who travel in space. So this sounds like an astral projection technique. Rama asked, how is it possible for these mortal eyes to behold the celestials? Vasishtha said, indeed, no mortal can behold the celestials with these mortal eyes. And this is where the, the yoga Vasishtha brings us back to actuality. But through the eyes of pure intelligence, the celestials are seen as in a dream. The celestials are able to fulfill one's desires. Visions of celestials is none different from dream. In fact, the only difference being that the effect of the vision is lasting. So be beholding the gods, beholding the celestials is of the nature of dream, except it's got a bit more permanence to it. But we're talking about a higher state of consciousness here. The celestials are able to fulfill one's desires. Well, I'm sure it gives rise to a, a sense of ecstasy and fulfillment if you see a celestial. Again, if one is able to hold the life force in the Devada Shanta, 12 finger breaths from the body, for a considerable time after exhalation, the life force is able to enter other bodies. This power is inherent in the life force, though by nature unsteady, it can be steadied. Since the ignorance which envelops everything is insubstantial, such exceptions are often seen in the movement of energy in this world. Surely all this is indeed Brahman. The diversity and diverse functions are mere figures of speech. So we're getting this teaching, but at the same time we're being asked to realize that everything is of the nature of Brahman and come back to that realization. <laughs>